This should be better. I mean the uh, so what so what was that real quick? So you got D minor seven, right? Talk them through the, the, the B flat. Yeah, is that my major seven or minor seven? And the diminished on top of it. Yeah. I think it follows kind of like the rules of like. 
like a two five one, but there's another chord in there. Yeah. I think that's kind of where it is. Um, again, I'm not really like a theory guy. <laughs> that's your realm. Fair well, enough. I, I just kind of feel it and hear it and play it. Yeah. Well. That's how I've always been. You got great ears, man. I have to have them. Yeah. Because <laughs> I can't do anything else. I, I hear you. Well, hey guys, how's it going? It's uh, Michael here, and I'm here with my good friend Mike Vance from the band Honey Extractor here in Baltimore. It's Mike and Mike in the afternoon. Yeah, exactly. So we're here, and we're going to talk gigging, we're going to talk playing, and we're going to talk gear. And um, so Vance, as I call him, as everybody seems to call him around town, is one of the busiest dudes around Baltimore. Yeah. And he was actually in the band that I'm in now, What's Next?, uh, before it was called that, uh, but yeah. with the you know, original pieces, um, you guys know Maynard if you've been watching this channel. Um, and so why don't you tell everybody kind of like what you're doing now? Don't you play like six, seven gigs a week? Yeah, like it's... full-time, aren't it, you? Yep, it's, it's a bare minimum of four. Um, we have a vertical Tuesday and Wednesday, uh, except for the first Wednesdays, and then we always pretty much have a Friday and Saturday. Yeah. So it's um, it's always a minimum of four. This week we were Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and double Saturday. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's a pretty crazy week. Now, is it typically the full band? Is it the duo? Do you do a trio? Um, I mean, tell people kind of what it is. Probably the most common ensemble that we do is is the trio, which is me on an acoustic tailor, yeah. and then our drummer on a kind of like just a you know stripped down kit, kick snare, occasionally a tom and a couple cymbals. Yeah. And then, um, and then Lex and we all sing. Yeah. So it's very like very stripped down, but it's cool because we get to do like I, I get to kind of be the bass player and the guitar player. Yeah. And all these things at the same time and like, you know, alternate percussion because yeah. I just beat on the guitar. And yeah, for sure. It's a different style. It's a little different than my electric playing. My electric playing is a little bit more obvious, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll, we'll we'll get to the rig and everything for sure. Um, and so, like, what kind of stuff do you guys do? Like, what are your, the trio are your stuff? strengths? Yeah. Um, honestly, I think some of our strengths are uh, now we're starting to really solidify some good three-part harmonies. BJ's Dude. finally starting to sing from behind the drums. Dude, I am so envious of everybody's, but especially your ability to, like, hear where harmony should be and hit it. Like, with, yeah. with all due respect, like, guys, like, he's a really good guitar player, but the dude is a bitching harmony singer. <laughs> Like yeah, it's uh, it is true. Like I'm legit jealous. That's <laughs> like straight up. It's a lot of uh, it's a lot of Simon and Garfunkel and Eagles and yeah, uh, you know all that stuff. Just Beach Boys and the Beatles and it's just stuff that was just kind of force fed to me as a kid. Yeah. So I, I always heard those harmonies. My dad was a big like folk singer yeah. and uh, and like '60s '70s rock and pop kind of guy. So I got a lot of that. A lot of the big vocal guys and also a lot of the big guitar guys. Yeah, for so sure. Was, you know, like the Yardbirds and Clapton and Jeff Beck and all those guys. You know, and that's the good stuff. So like, if you have, if you have a trio and everybody sings and you're doing, yeah, it just and adds. you're doing triads when you're singing. I mean, you're, you're yep. no wonder you gig so damn. Well, it, it really it, <laughs> it a it helps us it helps us all because we all take the lead. Like I, BJ's even singing a lot of lead stuff now. He's doing like like Nirvana tunes and yeah. and stuff like that and like a lot of the 90s rock stuff he's got a great voice for that and then Lex is just a powerhouse and she is I've and, seen I, her. and I fill in the gaps so it, it's cool man because it just we have to add as many layers as we can because it is an acoustic trio right so BJ has this 27 and a half inch kick drum and you know he brings that out for the trio yeah yeah why not well, yeah right yeah, yeah why not <laughs> it looks really cool <laughs> So we have that, and then um, occasionally, more often than not, we use a sub, a little K18. Yeah. And then I just drive the low end of my acoustic, and then I'm able to get just like, push it. You know all that, you know, pop slap bass kind of stuff. That's awesome. Yeah. It fills so up. how often do you guys do the full band? Um, this week we have uh, two. We have Looney South on Friday, and then uh, we have a winery gig Saturday during the day. Nice. So we have two, and, and Matt Barry will be playing bass with us. Very cool. Or actually, I think Matt Everhart is also playing Saturday. So Barry on Friday. Everhart. Well, I mean, <laughs> you know, bass players. Those man. are good choices, so man. You gotta, you gotta reel them in when you can get them. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's let's uh, noodle around a little more, and uh, then we'll talk. Uh, we'll talk about that sweet GNL you have there. Yeah. All right. Cool. Uh, your turn to pick the progression. Now. My turn to pick. All right. Give me a second here. You know my reverb. Just went out on this Mesa Boogie. Is it spray? Yeah. Just, just give it a good. 
Well, well, let me mess with it. You play, play the riff. country stuff, man. That's something that I wish I got into a lot sooner. I feel the same and way, man. Once I got into, especially bluegrass stuff for me, I, um, you know, really just got bit by the bug and I just couldn't stop, can't stop doing that. Yeah. Especially once you start getting into hybrid picking, I know. you, you like, can't go back. And that's, but that's the thing. Everything it's, feels so inefficient. I do either pick or no pick at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, I'll attack, like, I'll do those hybrid picking things. <laughs> Like, I'll do that, but I'll do it with my thumb instead of a pick. Yeah. So it doesn't get that same, like, bite to it. Yes, yeah, for sure. Need to work on that. Well, two things I want to ask you about in particular regarding gear. So, first of all, you got the G&L. Yes. Why don't you tell everybody what this is? Because that thing sounds awesome. Uh, it looks awesome. This, it's obviously yeah, a strat man. something, but, like, yeah, it's, uh, you know, the switch pickups a, there. There's a lot going on here. So... I guess we'll just start with GNL. So, yeah. what was it in the '70s? I think when Leo sold Fender basically mm -hmm. to CBS. I think it was. Right. Um, you know, he didn't stop making guitars, obviously, but you know, all the Fender stuff and all the new ideas aren't going to be put on the Fenders. Yeah. So any Fender you get, like post that whatever date it was, it's just all the same old stuff from that. Um, the GNLs, uh, Leo got together with this guy George Fullerton, and they kind of just essentially just made the super fenders 
That's really what they are. So the bridge is a little bit different. They call it a dual fulcrum bridge, but it's the same idea, but it's got these two pivot points right here, and it's just way more sturdy and way more like... So even when, really, you, even when you like, pull on it really and bend a lot... Like, it's, it's really, really handy. And I play with a really heavy hand anyway, yeah, so yeah. to have that extra just, like, grip to it really helps. Um, and then... The, the tone controls are cool because it's typical volume, tone, tone, but it's master volume and then a passive bass roll off and a passive treble roll off. Hmm. So instead of like splitting it up between the pickups, it's just master for all of them. And really? Then, and then these pickups are the Z coils. So these are essentially single coil pickups. And if I get this wrong, forgive me, GNL. Um, <laughs> but they're essentially single coil pickups and they're wound like humbuckers. So one goes clockwise, one goes counterclockwise. So they're next to each other like a humbucker would be, but they're offset a little bit because for some reason when Leo tried to do this pickup design, the way that he initially had it when they weren't offset like this, it just completely canceled out the sound. Like they're really? like it was just nothing coming out. So he had to move them and then, um, you know, what well, you can't hide, you know, highlight. So they just made these cool little pickup covers for him. And they became the Z coils. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, and uh, that's pretty much it on as far as Show, like, the stock so goes. So talk about this thing. The Jake blade. The yeah. Jake blade. You're the only one I know that has that. Yeah. It looks like that's a lot I'm of fun though. I'm probably one of the only like hippie kids you know. So no, that's um, not true. Well, <laughs> that's good to know. <laughs> um, so essentially, there's this band, Umphreys McGee. Anyone uh -huh. that knows me knows they are I'm a in, great yeah, band. Anyone that knows me knows I'm in love with these guys, and they're just stellar musicians one of the best sextets i've ever heard um you know and every like with all these layers it's still so perfectly placed you can they, always hear everything they are a great band and um they're a lot of fun too live um but the guitar both guitar players have this um basically tremolo arm but the difference is instead of like the big bar that gets you know in the way of your controls and all that other stuff and it's the big dive bomb kind of thing yeah you, the floyd man right. that, yeah that'll do it and uh yeah, but see, it's a little bit different because you don't have like the pickup selector there and all the other. True, stuff, so true. It's a little bit different, but it's still incredibly cumbersome. It is. It I mean, really like is. you, you have to like decide. Okay, now I'm doing dive stuff. Yep. And then now I'm not. Yep. And now I'm trying to do the little Jeff Beckisms, you know. You know. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But so this thing is cool because it's it's not in the way and it's really it just fits right in your hand. So like you can just grab it and use the butt of the guitar to really dig into it. Uh -huh. And like I said, it's solid. It doesn't like throw me out too often, and it's just, just small. And you know, you don't get the big dive bombs with it, but it's better for just, like, you know, just short little squirrels. Yeah. Yeah. Snare sounds nice. I'm gonna turn that off. <laughs> Mute the snare. Yeah. There's drums in the studio, so the snare. All right. What about what about this amp you're playing, dude? Ah, this guy, the Reverend. I got this at, uh, on consignment. Is that me or you? I guess it's me. I love that. Yeah. Cycle 60. Um, but this I got on consignment at Coffee Music in Westminster, which is the only place to shop for music gear. Right. Um, they didn't pay me to say that. <laughs> but essentially, uh, this thing's cool because it's, like I was telling you earlier, there's no master volume on it. Mm -hmm. So it's just either on or off, really. Gotcha. And like all these, you know, amps like this, they have that sweet spot. So it's like, you can hear it when it goes, like there, yeah, it's right like, there. It's like all of a sudden it's like, oh, uh, we, we've just gone flat. And so it's a lot of fun. It's got a lot of beef to it, man. Oh, dude, it really does. And it's got this cool little schizo switch that gives it, like right now it's on the UK setting. So it's that marshall -y kind of growl, and then you can flip it to the US. It sounds a little bit more like a hot rod. Sounds good. I kind of like the UK setting. Yeah, so do I. It's just a little girthy. It's got more like aggression to it. Um, but yeah, the controls are real simple. It's gain and volume, then the three band EQ, a presence, and reverb. The reverb's really nice too. It's just yeah, yeah that's, that really does sound good. Yeah, and it, it's not too overbearing. You leave it at like 10, 11 o'clock, and it's nice. Um, but yeah, and it's 40, 60 watt, 
convertible kind of thing. And my favorite thing to do so is... So what is it, like 40 watt for class A, and then 60 watt is like... Essentially. Yeah, it does that class thing, or the class... What is it? The bias? Jesus, thing. you didn't tell me I was like viciously out of tune over here. Oh. <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't even hear it, honestly. So, um, so I haven't played this guitar since I, I just got back from Colorado. I filmed a thing with Jam Play. And, uh, oh, did you fly with it? And I flew with it. Oh, yeah. And I haven't even... I literally took it out of the case... Make sure it looked right. Put it on the wall, and like the thing won't stay in tune for it at all right now. Yeah, yeah, that's that's exactly what happened to this thing after. What do you do when you fly with stuff? It's a good topic. Um, I take it with me on the plane. Yeah, I yeah, do too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and um, Southwest most of the time will. Uh, They're pretty be cool. cool. Yeah, if, I mean you got to check in on time. You know, like you yeah, gotta, you, you, you can't come in prompt. and like you can't like see fifty six. Yeah, you, you, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you got to be prompt. That's that's the trick with that. But if you know if you're polite about it. Yeah. You know, you, you can usually get them overhead. Um, and the best thing is just to get the thinnest case you possibly can. Yeah. And just kind of split it up. So, like, uh, you know, like, my bass player and I will share an overhead thing. And we'll just throw the guitars in there. And, you yeah. Know, you just, you know, pack smart. Gotcha. That, that's the trick with that. Um, yeah, flying with gear is always nerve-wracking, man. Like, yeah, I, especially, like, you know, you want to bring your pedal board. Oh, I do. Like, my BWI sticker's still on there, actually. Well, you know what? That's a good one. Yeah. But, but uh, I mean, you never know what you're gonna get amp wise, dude. Like that, dude, we played that Sloppy's gig, you know. Yeah. You had you that, had that one that I had. Which one was that? The Black, the Black Star. Star? Yeah. That thing sounded terrible. Yeah, I'm not. I'm, I wasn't a huge <laughs> fan of it. But you know what? The one thing I do love about those guys down there is that um, the sound guys like Matt and Bobby and dude, and, Tony no. and all those guys, they make it sound good in the mains. Like, yeah. So at the end of the day, I'm just like deal with it you know like, yeah no th those are good guys but like you can tell that bands come through there oh yeah well that's the thing about that place is that you know it's it's every like, it's band a that venue that has music every day three times yeah. a day so it's like for those that you don't know um so sloppy joe's in key west you know um so a lot of like the biggest bands from all around the country they hire them to come in for a week at a time and um so since a lot of people fly you know they have yeah. they have gear there yep. but it's just like it's Man, the house gear. That is, you know, that is some work. I mean, that place yep. does work. Yep. And I mean, you know, it's a small island, so they yeah. only have so many people that you know can work on it in, in a moment's notice and stuff. Sure. Like I actually blew up one of their hot rods one time. Really? When I was down there with Alter Ego, yeah, I, I blew up one of their hot rods. I was so upset because I love that amp. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> and it went it went down on me. What you gonna do? Uh, All right, let's it. let's play one more, and then we'll we'll show the people your pedal board here. Oh yes. Else. Yes. Thank you. 
First, uh, the first gen, not the PV one, one of the Jeff Bober guys. Yeah. And then um, I'm running that into the compressor, the SP. Right. Like, I think we agree, Exotic makes great stuff. We do agree. Um, yeah, they're a lot of fun, man. I, I like that compressor a lot just because it's very, like, it's easy to control. And there's yeah. a blend knob, so you can kind of, you know, you can, you can squash it, but you can still get that dry signal that doesn't, like, sound, you know, yeah. Like a good, you know, cheesy pop song from the eighties. I'm gonna put it back on our faces because it's just weird to hold a conversation and not be able to see people's faces. Yeah, this is also true. Yeah. Um so then that runs into this Fuchs plus drive. Uh this guy out of New Jersey makes really great amps, also makes really cool pedals. Yeah. And I'm using that kinda like guys use like a like a Klon centaur. Like it's just kinda on. It's mm -hmm. like just this little bit of like, like without it. It's just a little bit more stable. With it, it just adds like a little bit of extra. And I give it a little gain sometimes. I'm running it kind of quiet right now. Mm -hmm. But it, it's it's basically a tube screamer circuit, but it's got the touch knob, which is like a little presence knob kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So like that high mid-range, you can kind of dial in a little bit more. If it's like a dark room, you can brighten it up a little bit um, and vice versa if yeah. it's, you know, really tinny. Um, and it's got to actually be really helpful. It is. It is. It's. It's kind of what I. Because every group is so different. Well, what I used to do is I used to have a GE7, 
mm-hmm. like the Boss GE7. It's my favorite boss pedal of all time. It's perfect. Like, cause it's just a nice little, you could just notch out whatever's not supposed to be there. Right. Um, but this thing was cool because it gave me the option of having like a gain stage on my board that I could toy with. Yeah. So I could just set it and forget it with the amp and then everything is just in front of me. So I'm never like turning my back to the audience or anything. Like I can flick it with my shoulder, sure. lean down real quick. So it's, it's easier that way. Um, and then all of that is just before I even hit this loop. Um, yeah, so, well actually, no, I'm sorry, the Fuchs is in the loop, it's right there. Um, just because without it, I wouldn't, I'd have an empty slot. And yeah, I, can't have I gotta, I, I gotta show people what this board looks like. Yeah, the it's, loop. It's, 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 it's interesting, man. It's, it's a great way to organize your stuff, though. Like, any, any guys that like a lot of pedals, or maybe even not a lot of pedals, maybe you're just sick of, you know, tap dancing. Yeah. You know, this is really user I mean, friendly. that is really organized, dude. It is. And the cool thing is, is that you don't ever have to, like, hit your pedals. So your pedal, like, these switches and stuff will last a lot longer. So you leave them on, and yep. then the loop basically controls whether they're in the signal or not. Yep. So, you know, if I want the soul food... Friedman sounds awesome. Yeah. I like running them both together because it's just obnoxious. It's really obnoxious. Yeah, we're <laughs> going to have to do that for our last little <laughs> Yeah, Oh, yeah. Um, save the loudest for last. Uh, the chorus, really great. Dude, the phase 90 is good, man. Oh, this phase 90 is awesome. This is... Uh, this is my buddy Tim's uh, phase 90, actually, that he kind of just gave to me and mm-hmm. never asked for it back. And then I saw him, he came out to the Everclear show that we did, when we opened for Everclear, and he was like, hey man, he's like, I think I heard that Phase 90 on that one song you did. I was like, yeah, it's still on my pedal board. Years <laughs> later. Thanks, bud. Um, he, he did some mod to it. I'm not exactly sure what he did, but he, he plays bass, and he modded it for the bass. Right. So it's got this, like, a lot deeper of a, like, a small... You know, and you can get like really, like, like almost like a rotary effect with it because it's yeah. It's normal, got more depth normal phase nineties don't go that far, do they? Mm, like, not to my knowledge. I mean, I used to have one, but like, I see, that's the only one, that's the only like one that. I've ever had. But I've heard other guys use them, and they never really sound like that, like right. You know, that warbly. Um, the trem's a lot of fun. That one also, is, like, you can really speed it up and get weird. Is that the Kill Bill? Yes! <laughs> yeah, dude. Good old Nancy Sinatra. What, what is that called? Bang Bang. Oh, that's yeah. My, that yeah, by Nancy Sinatra. That's, that's, and there's a, there was a video floating around the internet a couple months ago, or maybe a year or two ago, that a uh, little girl singing it on one of those, like, international talent shows. And she was like eight years old, and it was like chilling. She came out in, like this white dress with like this little like wreath tiara, yeah. and it just scared the crap out of me. It was just, really just, like all... crushing it. But, but she was song, am- but she was eight. amazing. Yeah, like absolutely incredible. Song. <laughs> and she's eight years old singing this song. It was like I saw um, a kid do a cover of uh, Nirvana's "Dumb" mm-hmm. uh, and on YouTube, and he was like, he's like, yeah, this is dumb by Nirvana. You know, because I can relate. And he actually said that, and I'm like, you know what this song's about? <laughs> never mind, never mind. You know what all the songs are about? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, and then Trem, and then then I have my one fun pedal. Well, not my one fun what pedal, is that? but the funk. Which is, right now. is that what you were playing before? Yeah, right now it's very... It's honestly just because it's, uh, I'm running everything so quiet right now. Let's see if I can quiet that down. So yeah, it's, it's got, but it's, it's cool because it's, it's not like a Qtron or any of those other auto walls. Like it's like it quacks, you know? You know? It's great for the Grateful Dead stuff. Yeah!
Oh, that's, that's such a fun one, man. But yeah, it's uh, you know, I need to do more stuff like that. I don't, I don't have, I don't have, we don't have, any, as you know, we don't have any jam stuff on our stuff. Right? Oh yeah, like zero. Yeah, neither do we. But we make things jam songs when yeah. we get bored. <laughs> like we added this, like this just. Whenever we feel like ending it, we're gonna end it jam to the end of the the super funky medley that everybody mm -hmm. does. The superstition mm -hmm. funky music. Sure. Yeah, because um, those songs just naturally go together. Um, the one thing I'm trying to add to it though, because you know, like when you play those songs, and I know you guys do a lot of medleys, and it's just like it's becoming a, it's becoming almost all medleys. Yeah, but that's it's so <laughs> fun though. It's, it's really so becoming fun, like, interesting. I've I've gotten to the point where I'm just like, how many songs can I fit inside of this song? And like I, I get to that point, like with um, we do this whole drop D thing, um, where we do like we play tools sober yes. over top or underneath of Lords Royals yes, and then that transitions into um, like I throw like the killing in the name of lick, you know, and then dude uh, that probably goes over great. Oh, it's fun. It's fun because like the musicians in the crowd always go. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. but like everybody else is just like they hear sober and they're like, like the girls are like, oh, what, what, why are you playing? And then they, they hear Royals start, and they're they like, start, oh, that's yeah. right, I know that song. They have hey. to start screaming. I said, but the time. Right? Uh, it's so funny though, cause I, like I love doing that. And then like the other medley is uh, when we do the um, superstition thing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, so that horn line in superstition. That, Horn yeah. line is God. the same horn line. We don't do that. I need to do that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but that horn line is the same horn line in uh, Sledgehammer. Dude. Dude, you guys do Sledgehammer? I'm trying to. Dude. I've been pushing easy. the band to do Sledgehammer right? forever. A, hey, all bands, Sledgehammer's a good song. Play it. Dude, Peter Gabriel. God, yeah, how can you, you give me? That? You just giving me two jobs, two things to work on. I gotta get yeah, that horn line, it's, and it's the same one. I was yep, like, it goes together. It, it's after the second chorus, I think, of Sledgehammer. They do that um, into the little jam session or jam section in Sledgehammer. Is yeah. that? And they're both in E, so yeah, have fun, dude. Man. You know what? I'll race you. We'll see who can convince their band first. You'll win. <laughs> I, I don't know about as that. As you're aware, I'll dude. I've been working that. on. I've been working on that for a while. <laughs> um, the one medley that we added that just goes over like nuts. We had to learn um, uh, a Bruce Springsteen song. Yes. For a wedding. Wait, we did Maynard's band? You, yeah. You guys need to learn a Bruce song. Yeah, but they. But, no, sorry. They requested that we make a Bruce medley for them. What, the wedding? Yeah, the wedding party. They were like, they were like, okay, we're all from New Jersey, and yes. so we put together a whole Bruce medley. What was Dude, it? Dude, it, it goes over like you wouldn't believe. So it it, it starts out with the, you know, the regular, the, you know, the, the... Oh, right, right. I'm so bad with titles, whatever that is. Um, then it goes into Rosalita, that... It's not, oh. but then it goes to the, the... Oh, dance in the dark. And it just goes over really well. Yes. That's awesome. Yeah. That is it's, awesome. It's a lot of fun. Alright, let's do something a little dirtier. Yeah.
after that. Um, the, 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 doesn't it go to the, the solo stuff? It, it's it's it. That's what that's one that like I feel bad asking female singers to try to do. It's it's like every time somebody yells out heart, I just look at Lex and I'm just like, I'm sorry. <laughs> you guys do that one? No. <laughs> I was gonna say. That's I mean so you get, she you, she could you get do to, it. You but get to decline. I think I think she could do it if she really wanted to, but it would be one where she would need like a break afterwards. Like that would have if we actually pulled that off, it would have to be like end of the set kind of thing. Gotcha. That, that is just a powerhouse song. Well, dude, thanks for coming over and doing this with me today. Yeah, man. It's um, a good time. Yeah, so for all you guys, this is Mike Vance from Honey Extractor here in Baltimore. And um, check him, tell them where they can find your stuff, dude. Um, HoneyExtractorMusic.com. We're on Facebook. We're on Instagram. We're on Twitter. Um, we're at every bar you've ever been to. Uh, <laughs> you guys are the busiest... I mean, yeah. you're the busiest dude I know. Yeah, if you guys want to see... How are your hands band, doing, man? Uh, my hands, they're, I mean, they're, they're still, still there. They're I mean, they're still there. you must do like Some nice 20 calluses. hours a week of gigging on those fingers, dude. Yeah, about that, probably. It's it's I mean, it's rough, man. Sometimes it uh, sometimes it hurts. I remember a couple weeks ago, I, I put something up on Facebook, a picture of my hands, because we had a double header that I day. remember that. And I just like, I was like, wow, that's disgusting. Click. <laughs> it's just black and... You know, just rivets and holes and stuff. It's great. Awesome. Healthy. Well, uh, thanks for coming over. And, uh, yeah, so this, again, so Mike Vance from Honey Extractor. Make sure you check his stuff out. If you guys are in the Baltimore area, um, go support him. Go drink a beer. Bark yeah. at him. Yeah. And, cool. uh, yeah, dude, thanks for coming over. Thank you, bro. I appreciate it. Watch the love, man. Let's, uh, we'll, we'll... We have to invade each other's gigs soon. Yeah, that would mean one of us let's, would have to let's, not be gigging. Let's do a gig swap. I'll do a gig swap with Let's you. Let's just do a gig swap. We'll just, just not we'll tell just, them? Yeah, just don't tell anybody. You want to do a Saturday? Yeah, let's do a Saturday. <laughs> there you go. Now they know. Now they know. Damn. Let's do one, let's do one more. We'll play them out. Let's just do like an A to G.